You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul, happy to be here. Yeah, me too. My name's Rob, and this is episode number 1032. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. It's been a nice long weekend. Hope that you had the same and that you got some flying in maybe. My my drone's ruined, so I can't fly it anymore because we used it to fly the course. It's not ruined. Oh, it's not. It's, it's not, not ruined. ruined. It's just it's not ruined. Uh, needs some props. Uh, in fact, that's a great reminder to buy <laughs> some new propellers for no, no, your no, Mavic Air. Oh, okay. I already bought them. That's good. They should be here today, hopefully. You can crash a Mavic Air like five or six times and it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. The office space Evidently. race course, though, really is taking shape finally. Yeah, it um, is. I flew it for the first time last week and wow, I need some practice on my FPV work. I'm so used to flying line of sight. I mean, like literally my mind is trained to fly a line of sight and it really, you know, when you fly Cinewhoop, when you fly FPV racers, it really makes you, uh, that pucker factor goes from, you know, it took you three, four, five years to take it from a 10 down to a two and you pick up an FPV racer and it just shoots right back up to a 10. (laughs) Well, and, and in, uh, your whatever hour defense, it's a little different. Well, it's a lot different than flying FPV, say at a park. Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, we've got very confined spaces Mm -hmm. that we're dealing with in this course, which is awesome. You're going to love it if you ever come by and fly the course. Yeah, as far as public safety is concerned, it's a phenomenal tool for public safety. But uh, beyond that, it's also going to be a whole lot of fun for our Cinewhoop class that we do. And, that you know, I know I said Mavic Air and then FPV. I know a Mavic Air is not an FPV racer. But just for you, everyone listening, um, if you change the... uh, underscore CFG underscore mode to a zero from a three, a seven, or an eight, um, then you'll get full manual mode on a Mavic Air, and it can be an FPV racer, um, (laughs) just so you know. (laughs) But uh, anyway, continuing on, I I will just say that it's something that I'm really excited for, Rob, because it's it's even pushing my skills to a new level, and anyone who does Cinewhoop and does it smoothly, uh, I just have to say I am um, I'm just... Uh, I'm excited like I uh, there's just no other words for it. it's just so exciting to come here every morning and and really like be enamored by that but um before we you know talk too too much about the office space race course here at drone U headquarters um just want to say a quick thank you again to everyone who has submitted a question or you have submitted a review if you want to go uh leave us a review it only takes 30 seconds of your time and if you have gotten one single piece of useful information from this show it would greatly uh, help us out if you would leave us a review. Hey guys, my name's Paul. I'm from Mayer, Arizona, up in beautiful northern Arizona. Um, I've been listening to you guys for about two months now and just can't get enough. I really appreciate everything you do for the community. Right now, I'm just a hobbyist flyer, but I am studying up to get my 107 and really can't wait to try to make something out of this. Uh, my question revolves around flying over roads and more more specifically state routes rural routes things like that obviously uh national freeways are federal land so i'm guessing just because of that you can't necessarily just fly right over those but what about state routes and and smaller roads um like I said, I live in a small town in northern Arizona, and there's a state route between me and a lot of cool objects on the other side. Obviously, I can't just go walk over there if if I wanted to, um, but it might just be easier to take off and fly over there. So just curious uh, what the rules are that you know of revolving around those kind of things. Uh, really appreciate, again, everything you do. Keep it up. And uh, Paul, don't ever let anyone tell you to drop your standards, good sir. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Bye bye. Uh, oh, are you? <laughs> uh, thank no, no, you. Yeah. So, Paul, thank you for the question. His name was Paul as well. His name is That's Paul. That's awesome. Yep. Um, first of all, I uh, greatly appreciate uh, what you're saying about my standards. Um, I, and I'm going to say, say that one more time. Thank you very much. Um, I really do appreciate that. So this is another great example of why to have the drone pilot field kit. Um, By the way, just so everyone knows, we are working on an updated field kit that will be 
probably about 80 pages down from 700. Yeah, I know it's a lot. But here's the thing. There is so much value uh, in that document because like on page 271, the rule for how the FAA views flying over, uh, it, it's so funny because he kept saying roads. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the information is right here, but he kept saying roads. Yeah. And it, flying over roads is fine. There's nothing stopping you from flying over roads federal or all otherwise. day long. Um, you know, the FAA did just put out an update to the critical infrastructure uh, NOTAM just this last week, if you guys didn't see it. And they were showcasing that there are more and more pieces of critical infrastructure that are on that map. Again, this is why it's just so important to ignore a lot of the airspace maps and just go right to the visualize it map from the FAA. I, you I just know, can't help it. I can't help it, no. <laughs> No, I can't. So I, I'm That's sure I'll awesome. get a call from ATO sooner or later, <laughs> and they're going to be like, can you please stop calling it that? And respectfully, no way in hell. I don't <laughs> I know. I think they I think they like it. it <laughs> I'll have to call Nina and find out. Those are the kinds of things that etch it in people's minds, right? Yeah, that's yeah. No, it's it's very true. But I mean, you think about it. If you've heard this show more than three times and you hear me say visualize it, you know exactly you what to you Google yep. and what you're going to get. So um, but anyway, that being said, it you know, flying over roads is really not a big deal. It's about flying over vehicles and flying over vehicles, whether they're stationary or not, is really the key differentiator in whether you can fly over vehicles. Now, I know as we're creating our public safety course and whatnot with FDNY, we've actually talked about some of the benefits that come with getting the public safety COA, which there really aren't many benefits actually as we go down the rabbit hole. But one of the benefits is the fact that you get this um, you get this waiver for transversing people. Mm. So it's not you're not allowed to fly over people, you're not allowed to hover over people, but you're allowed to transverse people. Difference being being you're momentarily flying over someone to get to another point, which is in all honesty, the FAA also does mention that in this document. So it's not that I mean, yes, it's 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 a waverable thing, but in the document they they even talk about someone who needs to fly. Um do you remember we talked about this? Cause I think Kevin Kevin I don't I don't know, I'm not gonna say his name right. Panzania Pan Panza, Panza, hmm. uh, out of California. I'm actually talking to him on Facebook Messenger right now. He asked this question because he's like, if I have to fly over a trail and sometimes there's people walking and sometimes there's not people walking, this was a show that we did and we actually like brought up the information. So make sure to reference that old podcast, but transversing people is something special that, uh, that comes with the POW COA and there are special, how do I say this? variables that are more lenient than anything you'll find in part 107. I want to make it really, really clear that I'm not trying to say that it's like, okay, to just fly over people under 107, because I'm sure I'll get misunderstood. And I'm sure someone will be like, well, my perspective said I heard this. So I just want to make sure people are not hearing that. Sure. Now, can you fly over stationary vehicles? The answer is yes. Now, I hope that the FAA will actually change this. If you remember the NPRM with flight over people, there was very specific language about, uh, you know, about who you could fly over, what they were in, what you could fly over. Now, what actually becomes law will be quite interesting, Rob, because I think flight over cars should be okay because... Like, think about it this way. If we, you if mean we, moving cars? Yeah, mo- yeah, excuse me, moving cars. Thank you. Um, I think something that's really, really important uh, or an important question to ask is, let's say we have drone delivery. Let's say Amazon, Walmart, everyone has drone delivery. Mm-hmm. What public thoroughfares do you believe would be good places for those drones to fly over when doing drone deliveries to help manage the expectations of drone of the perception of delivery drones, but in addition, offer the safest route for flying if something were to happen. Uh, I'm not exactly. Sure. Are, you, are you suggesting that they follow the roads? I've, this is something that I've thought about. Is like, what yeah. if drone delivery does follow the roads? What if public thoroughfares, just like you see in you know Star Wars movies, the thoroughfares are grid-like 
it, you know, even in Star Wars when they're flying around. Um, and I think that it's one of those things that you ask yourself, hmm. the FAA has to come up with some sort of system for this. Are they going to say, well, yeah, they should fly over the middle of roads because if they're flying over directly the center line of a middle of a road, they're not going to ever fly over a car unless a car is making a left hand turn. Like there are, there is algorithmic, algorithmic, um, algorithmic, algorithmic um, <laughs> structure that yeah. that we could add to that Isn't to say if this then that, if this then that, if this then that. So like, sure. I've always it, thought that drone delivery might happen over roads, like as a thoroughfare. That's really interesting. I, I would imagine you're thinking there is so that it's not flying over houses and people are freaking out and that kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. But I wonder. I think more the issue with flying over moving vehicles at least my perspective is that it's not, it's kind of like when you tell somebody like my son desperately wants a motorcycle to drive on the street. And I emphatically say not a chance in hell. Cause it's a death wish. Not in, sorry, Jake. This is actually Bersisa. Oh, I'm sorry. Bersisa. But, um, you're <laughs> you're it, even younger. <laughs> Cause it's like you say, it's, it, it's an, I don't worry about you. I worry about everybody else. Well, right, that's and it's, so it's the same. Especially true nowadays with distracted driving. But yes. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And so, but this—that's my point—is that this would be one more distraction. So it's not necessarily about the drone falling onto a car or something. It's the fact that everybody's going to be looking up at the drones and then crashing. Well, you know, it's that's, funny. It's funny that you say that because, like, I cross our road all the time with a drone mm, to fly yeah. over the field when I know no one's there. Like, I'll just pop up, see if anyone's at the field, and then I'll just fly from sure. like, the freaking doorway, like. You know? Yeah. No. Um, and I do that all the time. But you bring up a good point because the FAA does say on page 271 of the drone pilot field kit, additionally, the impact of a small unmanned aircraft may distract the driver of a moving vehicle and result in an accident. Right. I will just say, empirically speaking, FAA, I've noticed that if I'm more than 40 feet over a vehicle, most drivers are so myopic that they are not looking more than 20, 25 feet above them. Most, yes, but yes. it's one of those things where I think it only takes one to uh, notice it. And then, <laughs> right? Well, it brings, I mean, it brings up that video. Remember that video that Vic got so mad about with that guy who was flying an Inspire One like 10 feet over moving traffic on like a five lane highway? Mm, you remember oh, that video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we were like, you can't do that. Like, that that's dangerous. And that's kind of what the FAA, in my opinion, sure. is talking about. So, true, so, true. So really quick, what does the FAA actually say? I know everyone's been waiting to get to this point, so I'll just go <laughs> ahead and say it. Sorry. Um, the rule will allow flight over people located under a covered structure capable of protecting a person from a falling small unmanned aircraft because such a structure mitigates the risk associated with a small unmanned aircraft flying over people. The FAA also agrees with the Edison Electric Institute and the NRECA, the American Public Power Association, and Continental Mapping that a small unmanned aircraft should be allowed to fly over a person who is inside a stationary vehicle that can provide reasonable protection from a falling small unmanned aircraft. The FAA has modified this rule accordingly. The rule will not, however, allow operations of a small unmanned aircraft over a moving vehicle because the moving vehicle operating environment is dynamic. It's also not directly controlled by the remote pilot in command. And the potential impact forces when an unmanned aircraft impacts a moving road vehicle pose unacceptable risks to head-on closure speeds. Interesting. Hmm. Additionally, impact with a small unmanned aircraft may distract the driver of a moving vehicle and result in an accident. So. Yeah, I would say impact would do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I think that could happen without impact. That's the, that's yeah. the challenge. But Again, you're right. I think if... The, like, just, I just want to say really quick, sure. the NPRM may change this in the future. So, you know, it is September 2019 now. And uh, if you're listening to this show and it's 2021, 2022, 2023... The rules may have changed. Yeah, absolutely. But to your point about delivery and so forth, if the drone is, I mean, we've got that space up there, say 100 to 400, right? If they're using something way up high, then I think that'd be fine and be much less distracting to any drivers. They wouldn't even notice. It'd be like airplanes fly up high and we notice those and everybody's fine, right? So, I always use the anyways. example of helicopters because yeah. I always notice helicopters. True. Like, you know, that Leonardo da Vinci quote really resonates with me. It's like once you've taken to the skies, your eyes will will always glare up, you know, thinking mm. about what you're missing. I forget exactly the, how the quote goes, mm. but it's so true. Once you've been a pilot, you always look up. Most people don't even look up at helicopters. Right. 
So unless it's a military helicopter or something that just sounds really cool. And so everyone looks because it's different and unique, but anyways, yeah, those distractions are up there all the time. Did I cut you off from the whole distraction? Okay. All right. Just making sure. Nope. I think the thoroughfares are going to be a very interesting point as well, especially for BVLOS Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. what, you know, what about BV and EVLOS in populated areas? Lots of questions to uh, to answer. And one thing I will say is that, you know, the FAA that I've heard recently, I think this is one really positive thing about the FAA, Rob, is they understand how fast this technology is moving. And they're realizing that, like, you know, they can't act as if they had with other aviation technology in the past. They have to come up with risk-based decisions that allow for scalability of these operations. And I think they understand how important it is. And so, I agree. I know they're working hard on it. Definitely. Well, thanks again, uh, everyone, for watching, listening, or however you watch the show. Don't forget our upcoming mapping classes. Yes, yes, the mapping classes. Um, I just want to say, if you didn't hear that show with Bill English uh, talking about our upcoming crash reconstruction class going on in Northern Virginia, you will not want to miss that class. Even if you're not doing crash reconstruction and you're just simply doing, you want to do really advanced mapping, like who is this really for? I I wanted to answer this on a show because I feel like I didn't get really a good opportunity to go over this with Bill. But if you're in historical preservation, this is a phenomenal class for you. If you're in public safety and you want to get to know search and rescue mapping, we're doing exercises on that. And again, this is another phenomenal class for you. If you're also doing mapping for VFX or if you're in the movie industry, this is another phenomenal mapping class for you. Why? Because the acquisition is so advanced on some of these flight exercises, it's going to teach you when to merge models, when not to, the difficulties of merging models, and the difficulties of getting the most beautiful 3D models. Are we going over accuracy? Yes, but we're also going over some extremely advanced mapping. So make sure you check that out. It is available on our training events section. Just go to droneu.education, training events, and you'll see the NTSB link is there. We're about halfway full on that class, so make sure you check it out because it will fill up. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Droneu. (laughs) 